around the table. Turn 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 around the table. Did I mention dinner on the table? I'll be right in with the lasagna, guys. Be careful, it's very hot. I don't care if it's hot, just as long as it's here. Yeah. Yeah. Is putting it mildly. <clears throat> Instead of this, could we, like, uh, have some food, please? I'm sorry you don't like it. It's Joe's frozen microwave lasagna. I didn't have time to make fresh. Can you live with it? <laughs> all right, all right. Get in the car. We'll go to Vito's. Mm. Vito, you're the master. And I tell you, this is a lot better than Joe's frozen microwave lasagna. So is appendicitis. Oh, I thank you. But the true master was a man who taught me how to cook. The great Giuseppe Squisito. He made the best lasagna in the world. He was your teacher? He was my teacher, my mentor, my hero. The greatest Italian chef who ever molded a meatball. We were so fortunate, those of us who got to train under him. You call yourself a chef. I should make you all turn in your soil to aprons. Tell me, what are the two most important ingredients in anything you cook? Your heart and your soul. I can hear you. Your heart and your soul. Until you learn that, you will never be worthy of the honor of being called a chef. If only I could hear him call me that. Well, invite him. I'm sure he... Oh, no, 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 no. He retired. Uh, disappeared long before I opened the Vitos here. No one knows where he is. Or even if he is still among us. Hmm. Quiet, Ori. Many a night, I dream of him seeing it, tasting my marinara and saying, Vito, you are a chef. Ah, but... It will never happen. Hey, let me get you some of Vito's world famous thick crust pizza, eh? Vito's a good guy. I hope someday he sees that Chef Squisito again. The best lasagna in the world. The best lasagna in the world. The best lasagna in the world. The best lasagna in the world! The best lasagna in the world! I've got to have it! I've got to have it! I've got to have the best lasagna in the world! Squeak! Wake up! Wake up, Squeak! Garfield, you woke me up, right? In the middle of a keys dream. Squeak, I need your help. Oh, it was about cheddar. That's my favorite. Squeak, I need you to alert the mouse network. I have to find a chef named Giuseppe Squisito. Uh, can't it wait till morning? Sure. <laughs> All right, it's morning. Find him. He's the man who makes the best lasagna in the world. On the table. How do you expect me to eat this when the best lasagna in the world is out there, just somewhere waiting to be eaten? <laughs> hey, I have to keep my strength up. Garfield, Garfield, my friend Irv here found him. Tell him, Irv. You're uh, looking for Chef Giuseppe Squisito? Desperately. Well, I moved. I now live in a cheese factory. Lucky guy. And Chef Squisito, he comes in all the time to buy mozzarella, ricotta, and parmesan. <gasps> the three basic ingredients in the best lasagna in the world. <laughs> Take me to him. Take me to him right now. Can we walk faster? He lives in a shack out this way. Why are we going all the way out here, Garfield? 
because I must have the best lasagna in the world. That's it. He lives there. Thanks. Okay, you guys can go home. I'm gonna go eat the best lasagna in the world. <laughs> Kitty cat, what do you want? Ah, 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 ah. You want the lasagna? Meow. The best lasagna in the world? <laughs> no. So you think Garfield will get lasagna? Garfield always gets lasagna. Ugh. Yeah, I know I look stupid, but there's nothing I won't do for the best lasagna in the world. Uh -huh. Down here, Tiny. A little bambino left on my doorstep. Are you hungry, a little baby? Yeah. Yeah, hungry. Then I get you the most the delicious food any baby would want to eat. <laughs> Here we come. The best. Baby food made out of turnips and oatmeal. <laughs> Do not cry, little bambino. Squisito will find you something you will like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't laugh. You used to sound just like this. <laughs> Here, a little one. You will like this. Hmm, this is not working out. I need to find some paper. What am I going to do? I cannot keep a baby around here, even a homely, fuzzy one. How can I find it's a mother? <laughs> a note? I did not notice a note there before. If you find this baby, please feed it the best lasagna in the world, his mother. No, I do not think a lasagna is a healthy food for little babies. Then return him to 150 West Central Avenue. Come, my little bambino. I take you back to your mother. Are you sure you don't want to grab a quick bite before we do this? This is 150 West Central Avenue. Vito's Pizzeria? You live here, a little baby? <laughs> yep. <laughs> A chef esquisito! Oh, oh, a chef esquisito! It is you! Do you not remember me? Uh, Vito Capelletti! I was uh, one of your students. Vito Capelletti? One of my worst students. You were the one who tried putting spaghetti on a barbecue. <sighs> Yes, but uh, I learned. I learned from you. And, and now I have uh, my own restaurant. Uh, please, uh, taste my tagliatelle. Uh, sample my spumoni. I would not soil my taste buds with your cooking. <sighs> but I am a good cook now. For... You could not possibly be a... Hey, that's not a bad meatball. You... You like it? In fact, it is a very good meatball. Tell me, how is your cannelloni? My cannelloni? It is, uh, it's, uh... It is, uh, under the way. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I have here a nice cannelloni for you. Ah, I want you to try my fettuccine Alfredo. Oh, and you must try my chicken marsala and my garlic bread. Vito, you truly are a chef. Oh. oh, thank you. 
Oh, grazie, maestro. Uh, thank you. And you, pussy gato. I am in your debt for making this happen. How can I show my appreciation? <gasps> Garfield, I don't know how you did it. You actually got Chef Squizito to come here and uh -huh. prepare his world-famous lasagna for us. I have not cooked in many years, not since I retired. I sold my recipe to a company that markets it as... Ah, it is already. Woohoo! Ah! Wow! Here you are! Joe's a frozen microwave uh, lasagna! Uh, uh, Chef Squizito, I don't know how to tell you this, but we tried Joe's frozen microwave lasagna and it was terrible. <laughs> terrible? But it is so tasty and so easy to make. You just peel off the plastic film and microwave it. Plastic film? Uh. Hey, if you take the plastic film off before you cook it, mm, this is the best lasagna in the world. Uh. Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to those of you in sorry need of education. Today we will explore the history, the legend, of the most superior animal on the entire planet. <laughs> Not even close. Of the one million species that inhabit this planet, none elicit or deserve more respect and admiration than the cat. Sore loser. Clearly the cat, known scientifically as Felice Catus is the most regal animal on the earth. We can trace the history of the cat back to prehistoric times, a time when saber-toothed cats roamed the land. The mighty saber-tooth was master of the land, a great hunter, graced with keen senses of sight, hearing, and smell. When he spotted a delicious-looking prehistoric mouse, his feline instincts sprang into action. As his primitive cat cravings took over, he became a crazed beast and nothing could stop him. Sadly, the saber tooth was wiped out 13,000 years ago. Here's our next lesson. In ancient Egypt, cats were worshipped as gods and goddesses, as well they should be then and now. <sighs> we worship you. We adore you. We love your act. You rock. Thank you, thank you. Really, you shouldn't. But what am I saying? Yes, you should. And now we dance. <laughs> ah, those were the good old days. Back when they knew how to treat a cat right. Hey, check this out. Back in the Middle Ages, the King of Wales proclaimed that cats were not only cute and clever, but also valuable. From this day forward, I decree that all cats are to be honored and protected. They are cute, clever, and most important, they are excellent at catching mice. Oh, hey, skin him off. Notice how cats love to eat mice. <laughs> Relax. I'm the 
can eat you. Thou shalt not? No, just playeth along. He's not good. <laughs> so began the myth that cats eat mice. Huh? Of course not. Use what little common sense you have, pooch. Here's a mouse. Here's a pizza. Which one would you rather eat? It would be wrong, very wrong, to think the only value of a cat is to rid the world of mice. In fact, cats have been behind, if not directly responsible for, some of the greatest moments in history. For instance, back in the Arabian desert a long time ago. Here, my cat. I have packed your food in these handy bags made from the lining of a sheep's stomach. In here are some mice. Oh, yummy. Mice for me to eat. And this one is some goat's milk. Whew, that's a little better, but not much. Couldn't we stop off for Chinese food? The nearest place is only 3,000 miles away. Huh? Enough nomading for one day. We stop here. Boy, was it a hot one today. Since I'm not about to eat mice, I guess I'm stuck with this goat's milk. <laughs> hey, something's wrong with this stuff. Hey. It solidified into ripened curds of soured milk. Does anyone have a cracker? Yes. <sighs> oh, no. oh, triple yum. I believe I've just invented a new food. Hey, give me some of that. This is a great invention. I shall call it cheese. Now he's giving cats credit for inventing cheese. That's ridiculous. Everyone knows cheese was invented by a mouse. But aside from inventing cheese, cats have made other great contributions to the world. For instance, Florence, Italy, 1503. The guy at the easel is Leonardo da Vinci. Yes, yes. I can see it coming together and now. Not what you'd call a masterpiece. <laughs> Stop! Gato! Stop, little Topo! You will ruin the great painting I am doing, which is destined to hang forever in the galleries of the world! <laughs> Beautiful painting. Hey, calm down, Lenny. <laughs> it's not a that wonderful. I could paint a better painting with my tail. Now, what the shall I paint? I know, your sister Shirley. Terrible. But the people who buy art have so little a taste. Good, Gato, good. What can I give you as a reward? Well, hundreds of years ago, my ancestors invented cheese. I was wondering if you, being Italian, of course, could combine it with tomato sauce and layers of flat pasta noodles, and then bake for, say, one hour in a 350-degree oven? Cat created lasagna. No, and painted the Mona Lisa. 1804, the study of the great composer Ludwig van no, no, Beethoven. No, 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 no. Nine, nine, nine. It's all wrong. Ah, hello, Amadeus. Have you caught any mice today? <laughs> Wait, do that again. Oh, brilliant! Thank you, Amadeus. You deserve a tasty reward. <laughs> and that's the truth. A cat was responsible for Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Brilliant. He's taking oh, quite a career. What are you doing? Come on, guys. Please, cross that. It's me. What's all this talk about cats doing this and cats doing that? You make it sound like cats have done everything good. Hey, I can't rewrite history, can I? That's all you've been doing here. Tell him the truth, Garfield. Well, it's mostly happened like... The truth, or we'll let John know how many pizzas you put on his credit card last month. All right, all right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, 
There were a few details I left out of the stories I just told you. Hey, something's wrong with this stuff. It solidified into ripened curds of sour milk. Stop it tasty! I think I died and gone to heaven. Tasty! I think we should call this stuff cheese. <laughs> cheese? Why? Because uh, it looks more like cheese than anything else I can think of. Okay, everyone, let's record this moment in history. Everyone look at me and say, cheese! And that story about Leonardo da Vinci? Well, it was true what I said, sort of. She's a ruin! <laughs> Yeah, sure looks it that way. Maybe you should try painting clowns or Elvis on black velvet. Hey, I know how to fix that. Actually, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Hello. Yeah, he's here. It's for you, the Louvre in Paris. They heard about your new painting. News travels it fast in the world of art. The Louvre? The Louvre? Why, that is the greatest art museum in the world. Little Topo, I want to reward you. I want to cook something uh, wonderful for you. Well, I had this idea for something called lasagna. Lasagna? No. No one will ever want to eat a something called uh, lasagna. Who knew? And then that story about Beethoven and his Fifth Symphony? Amadeus, there is a mouse in here. Boy, for a guy who doesn't hear so good, he's good at hearing mice. <laughs> hey, take it outside, fella. <sighs> now I have to chase him, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's no use. I do not even know how to start my fifth symphony. Maybe I should skip it and move on to my sixth. Right. That is it. Da, 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 da. Genius. Thank you, little mouse. Thank you. So you see, though cats have made their contribution to history, so have mice. Garfield. That was terrific. We misjudged you. You're a pretty honest cat. Yeah, it takes a big cat to do something like that. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. No, of course we're not going to put that stuff about mice on the air. We'll edit it out and just show the part about how great cats are. This DVD is the show we just did. I'm supposed to send it to the network so they can broadcast it to the whole country. But I won't. That one goes in the trash. Instead, I'm sending them this one, in which I edited out all of my stuff that just left in the part about how great cats are. No, it's not unfair. It's just sneaky. Besides, name me one smart thing mice have ever done. Well, for one thing, we're really good at switching videos. There you are. I just wanted to tell you I'm going to the market. 
Oh, great. Uh, bring me back one of everything, large economy size. <laughs> See you in a bit. Okay. Oh, make sure you keep an eye out for... <laughs> That's silly. I was going to tell you to watch for mice. <gasps> Who's not hiding? But we haven't had a mouse in this house for months. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Hey, you the owner of this, uh, this house? I think so. My cat might disagree. Well, I'm Pulver of Pulver Extermination. We have reports of mice in this neighborhood. Oh, not in my home. <laughs> well, I doubt that. But if you do see any mice, give us a call. We're fast and we're ruthless. Well, I'll take your card, but I won't need it. Not with Garfield on the job. I could swear I'm hearing the kind of music mice like to dance to. Hey, Squeak, another one of your relatives just arrived. Hey, family is family. Okay with you, Garth? Well, as long as they don't touch my food or interrupt my sleep, they're welcome. Great. Who is it? My Uncle Howard? My nephew Morris? It's your cousin Max. My cousin Max? What, something wrong with cousin Max? Oh, my cousin Max is bad news, and he hates cats. Ah, oh, come on, you're funning me. Nobody hates cats. Squeak! What are you doing with that... that... cat? Huh? Oh, don't worry, cousin. I'll protect you from him. I mean martial arts. hi hey hey <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. We may finally have a character on this show more annoying than normal. I don't have to be protected from Garfield. He's my buddy. Whoa, your buddy? Are you out of your mouse mind? He's a cat. You know what cats do to mice. <laughs> yeah, they do a mean salsa dance with them. No! They eat them with salsa. You've got a lot to learn, Squeak. Well, what should I do now, eat or sleep? <sighs> sleep. I'm telling you, Max, Garfield's not like other cats. He doesn't eat mice. Oh, well then, what does he eat? Uh, everything else. I can see you need a serious lesson, cousin. Come on. There's gotta be a player somewhere around here. Hey, watch this, cousin. You're about to learn a valuable lesson. Cats, what are they good for? They lie around all day, sleeping and clawing the drapes. So far, no argument. And generally doing nothing. And then there's the most horrifying thing they do. Cats eat mice. Argument. And they do it in the cruelest way possible. A cat catches a mouse. Does he just eat it and get it over with? No. He has to play with his food, draw out the agony. So he lets the mouse go, then he catches it again. And he lets the mouse go, then he catches it again. Oh, turn it off! Turn it off! It's for your own good, cuz. And then, when the mouse thinks he's gotten away, thinks his life has been spared, the cat strikes. No! No! Turn it off! Turn it off! No, it wouldn't do something like that! It wouldn't! He's a cat! Cats eat mice! Are you gonna let this happen? Are you gonna do nothing? While this cat sharpens his claws and his teeth? <laughs> I've seen what he can do to a 10-pound standing rib roast. Imagine what he could do to one of us. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm not gonna stand around and become rodent-flavored cat food. Uh-uh. Oh, uh-uh, me neither. Absolutely not. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. This is ridiculous. Oh, are you moving or am I? I think it's me. <laughs> hey guys, you want to explain this? No! Uh, apparently not. Okay, I don't know what this is all about, but I'm not letting a bunch of rodents throw me out of my own home. Hey, if you think you're getting me out of this house... Yeah! 
Uh, you're making a very accurate prediction. You're not getting us, Cat! Come near us again, and you'll be sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. You tell, you tell him. him. You tell him. I gotta do something about this, but not now. <sighs> I'm gonna take this bus into town and go to Vito's. I'm on my break, Cat. Can you wait for five minutes? Considering pizza's involved, no. But I guess I have to. I'm telling you, unless you're a lasagna or other fattening food, Garfield is harmless. He's a cat, and cats are not harmless. Relax, Squeak. With him gone, we have nothing to worry about. Mice! My house is full of mice! Nothing to worry about, huh? Everyone, hide! Garfield! Garfield! Oh, he's no use. How am I going to get rid of these... Garfield would have protected us. Cats don't protect mice. Besides, what can that guy do to us with no cat around? Mr. Palmer, how soon can you be here? Ooh. Yeah, that'll be fast enough. about, because there's no cat around, huh? Relax. I can handle this guy. Hey, you get out of here. Oh, I think it's rough with this. One of Odie's toys, maybe? I hope at least he's reading the comic pages. Garfield, you gotta help us. There's this guy, this exterminator. He's got all my friends. Your friends threw me out of my own house. I know, I know. They didn't mean it. Well, they did mean it, but they were scared and... Relax, relax. While I was waiting for the bus, I figured out how I was gonna get back inside. You got that for Halloween last year, didn't you? Yeah. But it didn't work so well. I didn't get any candy, I just got a lot of cheese. Okay, now you wait here. <laughs> that big meanie doesn't stand a chance. I think I've got them all now, and... Yahoo! Is the vacuum on your back as big as the one on your head? <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> I'm gonna need another canister to hold him. Yahoo! And for him, <laughs> I'm gonna need my machine to be on max power. Ladies and gentlemen, a brief chase scene. Like the rat you are. <laughs> There's no way to hide, Mouse. Hey, pal, you missed one. What's that? One I missed. I'll capture him, then I'll get you. Hmm. Guess that cat changed his mind. It's that toy mouse again. And what's this cable attached to it? Garfield, you saved us. Guess we were wrong about you. Yeah, we sure were. Hey, uh, Garfield, I'm not really good at saying I'm sorry. Oh, you just need to practice. You gotta say it more often. 
<laughs> hey, uh, oh, we were thinking, since you're already dressed for it, we'd like to make you an honorary mouse. <laughs> <sighs> well, just so long as I don't have to eat any really stinky cheese. I don't know where that exterminator went, but he did a great job. <sighs> I'll bet there isn't a mouse within miles of here. <laughs> I'll be back in a while. <laughs> Anything I need to get at the market? <laughs> a list of everything. Okay. Do you think we'll ever see that exterminator guy again? Probably not. I made a mistake. That wasn't the bus to Vito's Pizza. It wasn't? Well, where was it going? Well, let's just put it this way. Down there, they dance like this. Looks like a fish swap. Oh. I just called the exterminator, Marge. I spotted a mouse in my home. Whoa. Uh -oh. I want to put away all my valuables before the exterminator gets here. I left my bracelet right here on the table. Oh, my bracelet! It's gone! Oh, my priceless jewel bracelet! The one Grandma left me! Oh, missing! No, it didn't fall off the table! There's nothing on the floor except... Marge, you won't believe this, but I think the thief who took my bracelet dropped his wallet! <gasps> oh. I'll be down in a second, Garfield. Let me just put my watch on and I'll come down and make you breakfast. It's about time I had breakfast. It's also about time I had some lines in this episode. <laughs> It's not about time for that. It's never time for that. I've been practicing. Let's see if I can get this into the next county. Ah. <sighs> 
Now maybe I can enjoy my coffee in peace. Whoa! This isn't my coffee. My coffee doesn't quack. All right, who took my coffee? <gasps> Something missing, Garf? Somebody took my coffee and left this in its place. Not again. Packy! Packy! My cousin Packy. He's visiting from the house he lives in down the street. He's a pack rat. Loves to trade stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey, hey, that's a great rubber ducky. You want to swap it for something? Oh. How about a yo-yo? Oh. How's about a genie with 14th century Ming Voss? How about an autographed photo of Diddy food critic Eddie Gorman? How about my cup of coffee? Deal? I probably have time for a quick nap before John has my breakfast ready. Packy, will you knock off all this trading stuff? So, I just curl up in my bed here and... <gasps> Packy! I'm coming! Yes? John Arbuckle. We're detectives, Mr. Arbuckle. I'm Special Agent Frick, and this is Special Agent Frack. Huh? Oh. Mr. Arbuckle, you have your wallet. My wallet? Sure, it's right here. Did it look anything like this? Why, yes, that's my wallet. I wonder where I lost it. Maybe you lost it where you were stealing a bracelet. A bracelet belonging to Mrs. Ophelia Schmidlap, just down the block. This is stealing a bracelet? <laughs> That's ridiculous. I don't have any bracelet. I don't know where there's any... 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 You, you better, better come, come with us, us Mr. Arbuckle. Look at... Go. Wait, no! There's been a mistake. I didn't steal this bracelet. Huh? This bracelet must have been on my dresser when I woke up. I put it off thinking it was my watch. Good story, Arbuckle. But you'll have to do a lot better than that. Oh. <laughs> huh? It's the truth! Somebody help me! <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. There's your bed back. You sure you don't want this puppy? I'm not trading it. Just let me sleep. Leave me alone. Whatever it is, I'm not interested. This bracelet must have been on my dresser when I woke up. I'm telling you guys, I never went near this Mrs. Schmidlap's house. So how'd her bracelet get in your house? On your wrist. Oh. For the millionth time, I don't know. Lock him up! Well, what are you waiting for? Lock him up! That man stole my bracelet! But I didn't! Won't anybody help me? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's a simple deal. You give me the peanut, I give you this electric razor. No? Okay, I'll throw in a set of snow tires. Oh, my final offer. The razor, the tires, and ten free dance lessons. I wonder where John is. More importantly, I wonder where my breakfast is. Breaking news to report, 
Police are holding a local cartoonist on suspicion of stealing a bracelet this morning. Authorities theorize that John Arbuckle needed money. An investigation determined that he spends an awful lot each week feeding his cat. I'm... I'm a motive. John wouldn't steal some old bracelet. <laughs> of course not. I wonder who done it. He done it. Yeah. telling you I didn't take Mrs. Schmidlap's bracelet. Then how did you wind up with it? I'm staying here until he confesses. Talk, Arbuckle. What did you really need the money for? Mm. I can't believe anyone could spend this much each week to feed a cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I believe you. Garfield, get me a lawyer. I've got someone better than a lawyer. That's not a mouse, ma'am. That's a rat. A pack rat. A pack rat! The kind of animal that takes objects from one place and switches them with other objects. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Garfield! You got something you want to swap for a stapler? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get him to stop. Hey, hey, how about this detective's briefcase? I'll take that. <laughs> Looks like that explains how your wallet wound up in Mrs. Schmidlap's house, Arbuckle. And how her bracelet got to yours. Well, I can see I'm not gonna get satisfaction here. So I'll just get my hat and go. Right? <laughs> You're free to go, Arbuckle. Just stay out of trouble. That's trouble. Come on, guys. Let's get out of here. Now remember, no more trades or swaps or taking stuff. Promise? I promise. Okay. I'll see you back at home. Hey, hey, you out there watching this? You want to trade that remote control next to you? How about that bowl of cereal? Don't only buy it for the prize. Hey, I got some nice police station furniture here. <laughs>